This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. Start your engines. Race fans, you are tuning into the only motorsports show in San Diego. Your host, Dave Stahl, and the racing school teacher, Brittany Sandoval, are taking you to the green flag, covering everything from your top-notch national drivers and crew chiefs right down to your local kid racers and racetracks. Strap in. It's Checkers and Wreckers on Racer Radio. All right, this hour is brought to you by Southwest Point of Sale. Got a grocery store, liquor store. And you're having trouble keeping cashiers? Have you ever tried self-checkout? Walmart does it. Home Depot does it. So does Costco. Why not you? Make a call. 800-540-2149. Won't cost you any more than you'd pay for a cash register. Plus, you get seven-day-a-week, 24-hour-a-day service at Southwest Point of Sale. Go to southwestpos.com or call 800-540-2149. Hey, you got a BMW, a Porsche, or Mini, and you're tired of the dealer? Well, Black Force Motorsports has over 40 years of experience. And if you want to go fast, they can do that too. Blackforce.com, blackforce.com. What are you doing? I can't take you anywhere. <laughs> I'm having fun. I'm excited about our guests. You've always. Well, you're <laughs> always. I had a good day. Yesterday. And you had a good day yesterday. Yeah. You won your heat race. Second, second place. No, I'm, you won your heat race. Top two from each heat went to the dash I heard for you cash. won your heat well, race. Well, we can go with that. But Everybody said you won your So be quiet. I, I, I had a good time on the track. And then she goes and does. And then I jump out of my car. And head over to a party where Sprung Monkey's playing in my suit. And her I driving suit. I drove up on the trailer and said, we got to go. They're starting their set. So you were done, done for the night? Yeah, it was perfect. We went up first. What time? Oh, so what time did you leave? So, well. So it had to be we seven? We were done by about nine and they were going on at nine, but really it was pushed back to about 9.30. So we got there just as they were doing sound check. Did you take your I helmet got to play off? My, yes. I put a cowboy hat on. <laughs> It was like a dream day. Like, literally. I got to race new, my car. Is that going to be your new outfit now when you go on with Sprung Monkey, a um, driving suit? I don't think that they would approve of that. And I don't know if they'll let me play again. Oh, but, this is um, the second time. I know. And yeah. And no one's saying no. <laughs> are it they was pay, dreamy. Are they paying you? I, they don't need to. Well, no, no. If they're not paying you, they'll keep you forever. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. See, do they're like not, I do. Yeah. <laughs> don't take money. They'll bring you back. Who have you got in the house? Oh, my goodness. We're because so the one lucky. that races doesn't look like the one that races. <laughs> because this one looks like she should race. And this one looks like she should be the manager. I disagree. I, well, if you didn't know these two, then <laughs> that's what you would think. Okay. Well, I do bring in a lot of junior drivers. Yes, although she's do. a little older than that because she's in nursing school. And I'm just but. thinking this guy's what, a chauffeur? <laughs> no. Okay, listeners, to put into perspective, we have a living legend. She's sitting to my right. She is. She's a living legend. Let me see. Just some of her. Actually, she's noted as one of the most accomplished female racers in the history of AMA motocross. Wow. And she wasn't done. Then she then she goes, oh, I'll try out four wheels. And was the first woman to win the Mickey Thompson off-road event uh, and then she's like you know what i'm gonna go back to two wheels ditch the motors and make a career out of mountain biking and i think she likes downhill like i do yes well who likes and, uphill uh, well there's like cross country or then the just gnarly she likes downhill. uphill yeah oh okay the daughter I'm not do, I'm not um, yes and, and so we i mean she is a legend i'm so excited to spend the hour with her so well, before we have, you say who she is i stepped on a big time last little show I had Kelly's mother, Wetzel, married to what's his face, um, who they're not married. So are these guys yeah. <laughs> somehow married someplace together? These, this one, this one, no. Yes, I, I would introduce this as husband and daughter when I have a chance to introduce her. <laughs> yes. Go for it. I just just oh. clearing the air. What about last segment? I have no idea. But well, anyway, yeah. we have the living legend Mercedes Gonzalez and husband and daughter Derek. And Danielle, welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And uh, actually, they're quite accomplished as well. Derek is accomplished in motocross and still in the industry. And daughter is soon to be graduating from nursing school. Wow. So very accomplished family here. Thank you. So <laughs> I had Jason Aldridge. He's going back to the last. And <laughs> Sharon Shea. And awesome. you know Sharon because Sharon's is uh, Kelly Witzel's mother. 
All right. So I had him, her and Aldridge married, so I screwed that all up. So, and then you're sense. Speedy Gonzalez. Yes. yes. Who gave you that nickname? Well, Gonzalez, it's kind of easy. I think it was one. Troy Lee, because he, he started <laughs> painting a lot of my helmets. Oh, when really? I, yeah, oh. When I was racing, and uh, he, you know, Speedy Gonzalez was a big cartoon. Yeah. Then, and Heck my yeah. last name was Gonzalez. So, um, it fit. Yeah. Well, she must little... have been Speedy, nine national championships. Yeah. Nine. That so, what, nine. Got you, what got you on a bike? So I'm originally born in Spain, and okay. we came over to California when I was five years old. Okay. And my dad was over, always a uh, avid rider uh-huh. in, in Europe. And mm. back then, he rode a Jawa, ah, yeah. which did they he race? Would ride Enduro Street mm-hmm. and Trials. So he did race. Oh, yeah, okay. just a you know a sportman class. Yeah, sure, just sure, an sure, sure. So he brought the bikes over to California. Priorities, I like it. Yeah. Did yeah. you have? A, do you have a brother? I do. I have an older brother, Jose, who was also very involved in racing. I have uh, my older sister, Maria Gonzalez, and my younger sister, Susie Gonzalez. And, and the younger one never never got she, into yeah, it. Yeah, she was the rebel. She's like, ah, I don't want to do this stuff. So, she, well, the only reason I say it because you know a lot of times when she brings people in, if it's a young lady that's racing, it's because dad yeah. never had a son. Oh no, my brother. <laughs> My brother was actually quite good, and, and you know, he kind of took me under his reins, and uh, but unfortunately, he got hurt a lot, yeah. so, uh, and my older sister, Maria, also took to racing. We all did. We all loved it, and uh, but she got kind of hurt, and she was always just timid. She didn't push the envelope. Uh, yeah. I was mm. the crazy one. That's yeah. crazy one. So, Mickey uh, Thompson, what did you drive? I drove the super lights for Nature's Recipe. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm Jimmy a... Johnson was on our team. That's what I was going to clarify. I thought I yeah. read that. I am That's such awesome. a big Mickey Thompson. It was I, that great was series. the best series. And you know, Sherman uh, Block, Blosh, he wrote, drove for uh, Nissan. Yeah, yeah. So he found his old truck. He's restoring it. I had him and his son and his wife in for the studio for an hour because I read oh, a book that had him yeah. in it, of course. And I just think that was the greatest uh, series it was such ever. A great show. Forty miles an hour. Yeah. Forty miles an hour. Yeah. You had the people standing on their on their feet. Yeah, and I mean when we raced uh, the Coliseum. Oh, I remember, jumping out of it, jumping yeah, out of it. So when I first started with Mickey Thompson, I actually started with the motorcycles. You know how they ran. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I was the only woman in the show, and I was on a two hundred and fifty cc motorcycle. Okay. which, You know that that's a handful <laughs> to handle. Had a couple. of pretty horrendous crashes because when you're running up the face of the jumps the opposite ways the lips develop oh, <laughs> you know, oh, little knots in them and makes me hurt to I, think about yeah, it yeah me too. Uh, i got the opportunity to jump in a car and i'm like oh yeah yes, I'm all about yes. the cage i'm <laughs> right yeah. there with you and you weren't even old enough to worry about a cage yeah, right yeah well i was in my mid 20s by then i was like 26 yeah, and you're pretty you banged know. up by then yeah. huh? And, but I'm telling you, the first time I jumped down the peristyle at the Coliseum, I've done it on a motorcycle. And you just come out of the turn, <laughs> and just line it up, and just launch it. But the minute you hit the top of the peristyle, you can see everything, right? So the first time I came around the corner in the little super light, I'm like pointing in between the two peristyles, <laughs> and I launched it, and I'm like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Seats, seats, seats. Where's the hay bales? Oh, my gosh. Because you don't know no. how you're going to land. Uh-uh. You know, that was scary. But, man, the, after that. Thank God just... for suspension. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And seatbelts. That is amazing. So were you hooked at that moment? That was pretty cool. That was a, a pretty cool thing to do. Um, it wasn't full time. I worked um, as a sales rep at axo sport which was the more right. cross apparel company and you raised a family no i oh, yeah. didn't i didn't get, uh, raise a family till i was completely done racing which Smart. means uh after the mickey thompson series doing that for five years it folded yeah i, mm-hmm. I was going to stick with it actually don vesco gave me an opportunity to jump in a trophy truck mm-hmm. at his uh, test track and yeah. i actually did quite good so I was thinking, oh, that that was my goal to get into the trophy trucks. Sure, sure, sure. Jimmy Johnson graduated into the trophy trucks. My good friend Rick Johnson was I racing, know Ricky. You know, the the trucks. So I was like, I, I wanna be with those guys and yeah. unfortunately the series folded. Oh. Yeah. But 
then did you ever run that track down in chula vista what was the guy's name he was a construction oh yeah and he uh, and he and he just took this one jump where you went off towards the ocean oh, and the wow. wind got up underneath your car and you know just is this on purpose he designed yeah, was, that on purpose yeah, because okay. he was a little, you know, a little sadistic. Right. Uh, there was a guy by the name of Newton. They used yeah. to call him Fig Newton. Yeah. He uh, was the first one to land, sense. and it just took the wheels and, oh, and broke oh. all the suspension. It was ugly. Yeah. But that was a gr- that was another good yeah. program, you know, if you're into, into that type of yeah. thing. At this time, did you know Derek? Had you met now on the yes. magazine shoots? By yeah, then? so okay. I met Derek racing motocross. Um mm-hmm. Uh, we, you know, I was racing, I was pretty accomplished by then and he was an up and comer like mini bike rider. So I befriended the family and I don't know, Derek, uh, kind of a mentor for you at the beginning. I was, I was accomplished too. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Let's see you work on that a little bit. Did I help you out, Derek? Hey, I knew how to ride a motorcycle. She never beat me. No, ah, I, was, I was accomplished. I beat a lot oh my gosh, Danielle, have you heard this your whole life? Oh yeah, oh she's God. heard it. Is this you something heard it? you've heard your whole she's life? She's not even going to comment. <laughs> she's just grinning, listeners. So what were, what were you doing while she was doing her thing? I mean, were you working on your career as well? Well, like she said, we met racing. We were both racing at that time. So um, we were both pretty focused on that yeah. for the most part. And how we met was kind of, one was at a magazine shoot and the next um, I guess era was just like in practicing together, meeting out at the practice tracks, sure, sure. meeting at the races. Like she said, our families kind of met, got together, and, and it just became a thing after that. But it was racing motocross, um, you know, and, and then she kind of went off on these other things as I was still... Still working your career. Still working my career, racing as a amateur you know, top amateur in the team, Kawasaki Team Green program. Oh, Kawasaki, okay, good, good, good. So had a lot of time in there. I mean, my whole motocross, I guess, career was like 10 years, um, I would say, and then... Um, and that's a little that's a little on the long side. Yeah, and so it was just different. Like, we eventually started dating and stuff, and so it was, her career was different than mine, and, and it was always kind of interesting, you know, kind of, juggling those careers I sure guess, those. sure sure so that is so cool god i hate to tell you this but we got we got to take a break bills. we got uh, barona calling in yes mark rose with results he took a nap from seven uh, or eight o'clock I, on i can't believe he was on your early show because this morning. he is a trooper this is fm 961 am 1178 the answer Welcome back. You are listening to Racial Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The answer. All right. This segment is brought to you by El Cajon Ford, where nobody, absolutely nobody, treats you better than El Cajon Ford, whether you're buying new, used, doesn't make any difference, Ford store, family owned and operated, take care of you just like family. In fact, any car you have in your driveway, they'll work on it. So if you're taking your Ford in and you need to drop it off, then you pick it up, leave your other car. They'll do whatever you need. Oil changes, tune-ups, what have you. El Cajon Ford at www.elcajonmotors.com, elcajonmotors.com. Well, are we up from our nap? Nap? We don't yeah. take nap. Right? You did, I haven't too. either. You were sound I asleep mean, standing up. I what are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> I mean, good morning. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, this is Mark Rose, folks. He is the track wizard. Mm-hmm. He keeps, he's got the glue. He keeps everything together. Yep. He's in our ear. In our ear. And <laughs> I'm long. sure you had an absolute scrumptious night last night with racing yeah. and weather and I mean, the whole nine yards. It was a great night. It was a great day, a uh, great night of racing. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a lot of work when you enjoy what you're doing. So uh, it, 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 was, it was still a great night. You know, we had 112 entries last oh. night at Burroughs Speedway. Wow. Um, and uh, I want to congratulate one of them. Which one? This person, this person 
ended up being in the Dash for Cash, which yeah. was offering $500 to win the Dash for Cash. And never been in a Dash for Cash. Dash for Cash means you were one of the four fastest cars Jeez. in your heat races. That's something. That's amazing. And it was your co-host. It was Brittany. <laughs> I know. On that, Brittany. I did not that plan was, uh, on being in that. <laughs> well, you never yeah. plan it, but you know. But we've all been yelling at you. Just yeah. push down a little harder on the gas pedal. The heat race was really fun. After well, you know, after and, the restart. And that, and, and exactly, and that's that's where you you uh, you showed some backbone, and you got spun out coming out of four, and near ended up in my lap. But, I know, uh, I know. I spun around and I looked at, and I saw you, and I was like, "What was that?" <laughs> I said, "I put my hand up." I know you couldn't see my face. Who spun you out? We don't need to name that person, but he yeah. definitely tried to drive through me. Are you going to go after him? No, I'm not. You don't do that kind of racing. No, it's too. That's expensive. not in her makeup at all. all. I no, know. but yeah, but, uh, she, she she fought back and she ended up second in the heat race, wow. which. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, put you was that on the outside pole of the, of the dash? Yeah, right. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, in front of Darren Brown. Oh, that's what I <laughs> when I heard Darren Brown was in there along with who was the other two? Peters, Robert Peters. And Crow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, and, and, and track champions. It was, uh, yeah, it was it was it was a battle. Yeah, two two track champions, and uh, I mean Robert Peters has come a long way yes, in the last three years. Yes, and and Darren Brent is. As far as I'm concerned, he's the fastest guy in the West. Yeah, Derek Brown. Yeah, Darren Brown is Derek by Brown. far. Brown, That's why me, uh, at our driver's meeting, Mark said it's now 600 if it doesn't go to Darren Brown. It's Ooh. 500 to Darren it, Brown. Yeah. He dropped Somebody that at our driver's Darren meeting. Darren wins. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to put a little bounty out yeah. on him. Ah. That's now, but, my, uh, my favorite part is that Darren is giving me pointers. Yeah. As I'm about to race him. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't have to worry about it. But he me. also came up but and didn't he compliment you after the race? He's just, that's why he's one of my favorites. Yeah. He's humble. Yeah. And then I did not set up my car for the dash at all. I was bummed. I miscalculated how dry it would be. So I didn't perform as well as I wanted to. But his dad went and, and Darren talked to me about setup for the main. And I got to start right behind Darren. And it was like a dreamy spot. Wow. So I got to see him for a a big part of the first half of the race. That's so awesome. I was excited. That's I was awesome. like, if Darren can do it, I'm going to go. <laughs> so it's fun. It was super fun. But That's thank so you but for what, the acknowledgement. One of the most humble people on the face of the earth. Win, lose, crash, draw, it doesn't matter. Darren Brown is mm-hmm. just a class act. Mm-hmm. Class act on and off the racetrack. So as is Brittany. Yeah. Well, you know, really... You can honestly, I mean, you've been around enough racetracks. I've been around enough racetracks. I think we've got the best group of drivers across the board at Barona. Wouldn't you say? We have a great, great gathering of drivers up there. Nine times out of ten, uh, if they're going to, ha- if they have a problem with somebody on the racetrack, they're going to talk about it. Right. They're not going to go swinging punches no, and no, no. all that stuff. A, they know we're not going to put up with it, but B, they're just, it's just not in their makeup. They're all competitive. I know. Um, even the kids. It, it, even the kids. They're the better kids. than the adults. <laughs> We've mentioned that before. Well, the parents in the pits are the where your problem is. It's not on the track. <laughs> if you only knew. If, if you knew. only knew. <laughs> Let's hear some results. But, uh, yeah, you got any results? Well, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, Speaking of the kids, uh, Cody Binker, who his dad uh, also races a sprint car and a uh, dwarf car, he got his oh. first mini sprint win. And awesome. uh, I happened to be uh, standing next to them while their kid was racing, and uh, it was a joyful experience. Uh, Mom and dad both shed a tear, and oh. uh, that, that, mm. little, that young man's come a long way. That's so cool. Uh, I, I was just out at Camp Lockett this morning, and uh, his name came up, and I heard he had won. That's awesome. Yep. So it's yep. around town. And then uh, in the Sportsman Mini Dwarf, Easton Ross, uh, who won oh, two weeks ago. Oh, gosh. Uh, he went back to back. And uh, there, there's another one. I mean, this kid is so tiny. Yes, he's um, a little guy. Yeah, and, and you, you go up and congratulate him. and he, he won't shake your hand. He wants to give you a hug. Oh. And uh, he, he's just the sweetest young guy. It's, it's, it's really cool. And uh, in the Masters Mini Dwarf uh, – what can you say about Bryson Byford? Uh, uh, it's just in his blood. It, it's just in his blood with his mom, 
that's raced, his uncle that races, Christopher Evans, his grandpa, Eric Evans, just everybody that surrounds that young man uh, is fast. So uh, he will be he will be a track champion in multiple divisions by the time he is done racing out there. <laughs> yeah, well, following suit of his family. Exactly, exactly. And then obviously uh, Darren Darren Brown won the Dash for Cash, and he, he and Robert Peters and Tristan Peters and uh, uh, losing the name Crow. Uh, he uh, they, they put on a battle. The top four absolutely battled for twenty laps. The lead changed quite a few times, and then uh, old, uh, Robert Peters made one mistake. Mm, that's all it took. <laughs> and that's all it took. <laughs> Darren Brown attacked like a great white shark, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and put it away. So he he won twice. He won twice last night. Yeah. So congratulations to all those guys. Yeah, he wow. took home all uh, the money that could be won by dwarf car drivers. He got it all. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, the Dafferin family came over from Brawley, and uh, they had three race cars there, and, and Tommy Dafferin uh, ended up winning the IMCA Hobby Stock, um, just put on a clinic. Yeah. He is, I believe, I want to say he's sixth in the country right now, and unfortunately, he had four DNFs in his last six races. What? So he, he was leading the points on a national average until then. So uh, that, that that's another family that's got it figured out. Um, the IMCA stock cars, <clears throat> we had Chaz Baca from Mesa, Arizona, come yes. over, and uh, he and Brian Fitzgibbons from Ramona, man, they put on a clinic. Mm-hmm. They uh, those guys race so clean and so fast. And I don't know if you've ever seen these cars, Dave, but these cars lift the left front off the ground higher than a modified does. Wow. Um, the, the left fr- the left front rarely sees the, the, the track until they set the car back down going into turns uh, one and, and three. Uh, it, 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 it was a show. It was a great, great show. Um, we had the IMC Sport Mods, and Stephen Lutz got his first win of the season. Nice. Um, a- another one that is... He's been racing a long time, but he can really read a track. And uh, he went to the top groove and, and, and ran the cushion all the way around the top, passed for the lead on the top, mm. and uh, and drove away with, with his first win of the year. So that was exciting for him. And, uh, again, Chaz Baca out of Mesa, Arizona, another one that runs for IMCA national championships across the country. Uh, started, I believe, sixth in the main event in the IMCA Modifieds. And, uh, you know, the, the, those guys are racing people like P.J. Dyke, Cole Dick, Dennis Taylor, and uh, and Chaz Baca won that that division. So he uh, he won one out of the two races that he entered and just uh, just another one, smooth, can adapt, can overcome, knows how to set up a race car. And, uh, and, and he's... he's for his age, he's very, very seasoned. He races all over the country. So to, to have have somebody like that come join us at our little quarter mile of Barona, we're flattered to have him. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then uh, not last but not least, uh, kind of a funny story. The, the, the Barona Pure Stocks, we've had 26, 28 cars every weekend. Yes. And uh, Nathan Darragon came out Friday night for practice. And it was a little bit of a slimy track at first, and he wanted to run the apron all the way to the top. Oh, excuse me, the cushion all the way to the top. And uh, that's where he practiced most of the night. And lo and behold, that's how he won the race. <laughs> so uh, he, he stayed on the top, made some passes around the outside, and uh, won the 20-lap main event. Uh, actually, it was a shortened main event, but uh, he won running, running the, the cushion at the top. So uh, for those people that think practice doesn't pay off, Oh. That was that was proof in the pudding right there. How was that practice? The numbers, uh, epic. epic. Oh, good. I think we had 30, 35 cars, um, oh, which wow. was great. A lot of people practice, and you know, uh, it, it's a business. We we need to make a little bit of money. To yeah, pay the yeah. Bills, just like you folks do, and and uh, well, you pretty much put you pretty much put an ultimatum out. 
Well, he also let people know ahead of time. I'm wondering what yeah. worked. Well, you're the only yeah. one that puts the file out there ahead of time. Well, I usually do on radio, <laughs> but they did on Facebook. So I wonder if that's and, what uh, helped. Sure. Well, because, I mean, we talked about it on radio that, yeah. hey, if they can't get enough cars, then unfortunately, then everybody loses. So maybe if it's not yeah. every time, but every few times, and people know ahead of yeah. time, and they yeah. can commit ahead of time, then it works, and that's a win-win. It's win for right. the track because of the numbers, right. and it's a win for the racers because they get to practice right. what they want, or try out a yeah. new motor. Exactly. Or... So when's the next race? <laughs> I looked that up. I knew you were going to uh, ask if you didn't look, have it, Mark. Look, look, next race is July 8th. Okay. Um, and then after that is the big two-day shootout on July 21st and 22nd. And uh, like we mentioned this morning, uh, we're going to have drivers from Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, wow. uh, Nevada, Northern California. It, this is going to be a big show. We've already got quite a few cars pre-registered. You save a little money when you go online and pre-register for a two-day event, but uh, by July you know, 20, by looking. July 2nd, I just she, Trish made a big point at the drivers' meeting. Register correct, by the correct. 2nd of July. All right. Make sure you do that. You save some money. But uh, we are always looking for uh, either a premier sponsor for an event like that mm -hmm. um, or, or even a, a smaller sponsor to help with trophies. Something. Uh, just it, just anything. Yeah. And um, it, it's, it's going to be an epic show. If, if uh, anybody out there likes a couple days of racing, this is going to be a good right. one. You can bring your RV out, park on the top yep. lot. Uh, it, it's just a great show. So I told Tr I told Trish, I said, whatever you need for Racer Radio, just when you get towards the tail end, just let us know. We'll see what we can do to help out. So yeah, generous. Well, uh, like always, we appreciate what you do for sure. our sport and, and keep it, keeping it out there, uh, a, a, on TV and, and uh, yeah. B, on, on the radio. Uh, we can't thank you enough. We do have to go to commercial break, but before that, why don't you tell us who you're going to bring in next week when I'm in Hawaii? Ha <laughs> Mark's going to be your co-host next week. You're not week, going to Hawaii. I'm going on Wednesday morning. No, you're not. So Mark's going to join you with, who is it? Um, I'm, I have to nail it down with him, but Peter oh. Binker and his son Cody Binker, who won the, in the mini sprints last weekend at the father and son race team. Uh, um, and a bag and full of money. Up. Yeah. And and when I when I talked to them uh, at the racetrack, they were excited about it. So I just did, didn't nail it down. Did, but uh, did he just ignore me? Did he ignore the bag wants, full of money? He wants you to bring some money too. Well, yeah, because Brittany's cute. You're not. <laughs> Sorry, he didn't want to hurt your feelings. Well, are you bring? Are you bringing bacon? I'll bring bacon. <laughs> Wait, did you eat all the I bacon? I very hard for that. Did you day. eat all that bacon? Ever. No, I have three pounds left. <laughs> three pounds left? Yeah. Look at, look at it. We'll She's gone. All there. What is he we talking about? We gotta go to commercial about? break anyway. I'll explain right. then. That means she, she eats a pound of bacon a week is, is how I calculate it. Uh, it's new skis bacon. It's new skis. <laughs> Come on. It, get with the program. With <laughs> all right, Mark. So he's, now you can go take a nap. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. All right, buddy. You got it. Thank you, guys. All right, BronoSpeedway.com, BronoSpeedway.com. Be there, be square. This is FM 961 AM Folks, welcome back to Racer Radio FM 961 AM 1178. The answer. This segment is brought to you by Paris Auto Speedway. If you've not been to Paris, holy moly, that's one fast dirt track. And they put on a show like you would not believe. If you like speed and you like a half mile track, Paris Auto Speedway is where you need to be. We have by far our favorite interview. And we normally call him Batman, yeah. but Jesse Gordon. How you doing, brother? Hey, how are you guys? Uh, it's been a while. It's nice to, yeah. nice to hear from you. 
Looks Good like to you, have you back. did you do some work on your car, man? Yeah, that thing looks, looks like fancy. it's never looks like it's never been in a race. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've had uh, good luck on that aspect uh, this year. Uh, it's been three races, and I think maybe I have a little tiny scratch on it. But uh, are you just it's, staying it's out front? Out are you just staying out uh, front? Not not particularly. I mean, I've I've gotten a flat tire in one of the races, and uh, luckily won the last race. But uh, yeah, just you know, it's uh, it's a new car, getting the you know bugs worked out and getting the handling all figured out on it. But uh, yeah, it's a new car. So do those wings work? You think? <laughs> I mean, probably not as slow as we're going on the infield of Paris, but I would say in, you know, a bigger track, I'd say. Yeah, yeah maybe so. But they're but. pretty intimidating when people are coming up behind you and they see this big winged bat going ahead of them at, you know, top speed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, we we just wanted it to look, look pretty cool and radical looking, and uh, I think me and my dad figured it out. Yeah, you did. Um, I love your car. It, I do too. It stopped me in my tracks. I saw you live quite a few years ago, yeah. and I yeah. Every time I fan. see it, I want to bring you because I think you were on <laughs> KUSI once, weren't you? Yeah, I, I would definitely like to bring it down. Let's that'd do be, it. That'd be a cool experience. Do it, do yeah. it. Have you got my email yeah. still? I think uh, you do. yeah, yeah, I believe so. Send me an email. Let me get some dates put together. The only reason I say is because KUSI got bought out by Fox Five, so I don't know what the future of me being able to highlight all you racers is so i'm mm-hmm. trying to get as many of them as i can to get on before they make the big exchange they may leave me alone because they don't pay me so it's pretty hard to throw content out the window when you don't have to pay for it so right yeah yeah free content yeah, yeah. of course so you're mainly just racing uh night of destruction right you don't actually like race in a in a division like sport mods and what have you no i i did that a few years ago yeah. um but then I've tran- transitioned to the uh, Night of Destruction series and mainly just figure eights lately. Uh, I, I just I just love it, man. Wow. It's, it's an adrenaline rush. When are you going to do the double decker? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I got to find somebody to do it with that's crazy enough. I don't want to be on the top, so. You don't want to be on the That's top. That's the one who steers. Oh correct? yeah, you yeah you are a control freak. You like the gas pedal and the brakes, right? Yeah, exactly. And and also, you know, you got less farther to fall. So ah. you sound like you sound like Richard Petty because they always used to ask him, "Why do you get so close to the wall?" He said, "Because if something happens, you don't have that much farther to go." Oh, but that's right. so hard. <laughs> well, it's true because if you're down at the bottom. And you fly yeah. all the way up, and they didn't have safer barriers back in the day. I understand, that but is it's so, still so hard. It is very hard. Oh, yeah. So yeah. figure yeah, eight. You know, oh, go ahead. Sorry. It, it's harsh getting hit, you know, oh. like that that far. So. Yeah. yeah, we had a dwarf driver at practice on Friday hit the wall and break a rib. I don't think we'll yeah. see him the rest of the season. Uh, this season, what's the average number of cars that are out during a figure eight uh, well, the track's pretty small. I mean, normally we get yeah. 12 to 14 cars um, on the track, and and that's a good, decent car count, I would yeah. say. Anything yeah. more, it becomes, it becomes like the 405 freeway. Yeah. Right, 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 um, right. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty chaotic enough, I'd say, with, with that many cars and um, just my, making your passes and, and, you know, obviously shooting the X. Have you almost nearly closed your eyes ever in an intersection? <laughs> no. no. No? Squinted them really small? Um, Screamed in your helmet. Times where you, yeah, you tense up and you kind of try to look away, but... Uh, especially, you know, if you know, these... especially if you know somebody's coming to visit. That's what I'm saying. Of course. Yeah, of course. You definitely don't want to close your eyes, but you brace yourself, you know, because you're like, oh, this is going to hurt. I know you don't want to. I'm just. <laughs> How about screaming in your helmet? And Mercedes, uh, I have maybe, a, a question a for you bit. too. Yeah, maybe a little bit. You know, yeah. there's a little bit of screaming. But you've been pretty lucky, really, because I don't think you've had any major impacts, have you? Ooh, no, you... Uh, knock on wood. Uh, yeah, exactly. Not... Let's knock on wood. Uh, Dave, you brought it up. Knock on wood right now, oh. please. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're all knocking yeah. on wood. Yeah, I've, I've been very fortunate, um, and and I I do like to race taking 
uh, not taking unnecessary risks as much as possible in figure eight. Well, but, uh, the end race, you know. the end race is not going to garner you a million dollars. Right. So it's yeah. better to back out just a little bit so you don't have to pay that in medical. Well, we all have to work on Monday. But what if the other yeah. guy thinks he's going to back out? That's yeah, I right. think if you've been running long enough, I think pretty much everybody's got it figured out. Is there an etiquette? Like if you're the yeah, leader, if you're the leader going into the intersection and there's someone who's really like five cars behind you doing the intersection, coming up behind you kind of thing. Is there an etiquette to let off for the leader? Uh, there, there's kind of that unspoken agreement, but at the same time, if if they're closer to the X and I feel like they're going to beat me to it, I'll just yeah. I'll just favor and and then maybe the next go around, maybe right. I'll try and make it in front of them. You know, yeah. right, <laughs> right, 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 right. right. That, that, it's kind of that's that's what I mean by not taking the unnecessary risk. Yeah. is uh, just, just trying to you know hit your mark and right. not uh push that envelope you know so and that's yeah, and that's, that's, that's way better than a destruction derby because you're f- purposely running into people we're here <laughs> you're trying to thread you know thread the needle so to speak right yeah and and you are aiming for them so by the time you're at the x they're right. already they're gone <laughs> yeah yeah. You are yeah. <laughs> Amy. Mercedes, our in studio guest, is grinning really big right now. She's a very accomplished motocross racer yeah. and mountain bike racer. Yeah. And oh, wow. what, what year racer. was that, Mercedes? For the downhill mountain bike race? No, the, the motorcycle. Where you oh, were the your... motorcycle. Ah, oh, gosh. Um, 73 through 94. Can you imagine a Nine woman in, between 73 and 94 being at the top of her game in motocross? Wow. Nine national yeah. champions. Nine national champions. That's impressive. Drove wow. in the Mickey Thompson, you know, uh, and plus her husband's here. We never give him any credit. Oh, we tried. Poor guy. <laughs> we tried. But she's grinning as you're wow. talking, just so you know there. Batman. Well, that, well thank you. She's and, he, yeah, and, it's, and he's I'm, frowning. So we're no, going to gonna come back and give him some love. Because no, he worked hard out there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he did. Um, how many races do you think you'll do this season? Um, I'm, I am mean, I'm trying to make them all. Uh, a lot of them have been falling on my work weekends. But, oh, uh, it's overrated I, work. I, I, I've been making them all so far. Um, we'll just kind of see how the season, the rest of the season plays out. But I think there's eight races overall total this season. So, um, well, if yeah. you ever need a sub driver, I know this girl, her name is Brittany. Yeah, but if Mercedes beats me to it, I think she, the <laughs> grin is still would, on her face. Would you do that? Would you do circle? You know, Gosh, figure eight. No, I've well, never really done that. Oh, I, mean, I would. Mickey Thompson was more like jumps and <laughs> Mickey Thompson was right crazy. Right-hander, left-hander. Oh, she's gonna bumping. get air. And how many times did you get hit? A lot. Oh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled. I rolled my super light a lot. Have you ever been a to lot. Paris Auto Speedway? Uh-uh. <gasps> oh, you should. You oh. have to go. Oh my gosh. Jesse, oh, yeah. when, when's the next night of destruction? So uh, this coming Saturday, July first. Uh, is the next night of destruction. So it's Saturday so night fun. races yeah. start about seven o'clock, but you can uh, you can get there at five. Yeah. So, so the figure eights, and then I was showing them pictures of the double decker when we brought that up right. in demolition mm-hmm. derby. Sometimes oh, it's mm-hmm. so entertaining. Yeah. Oh my! And then in between races, they play music. They have good food and sangria. I always bring that up. Yes, you do. Oh yeah. Um, it's yeah. so and nice <laughs> bathrooms. Probably the nicest yeah. you've ever like, seen. Clean wow. and like thirty stalls. For women. That's great. Uh, well, yeah, All, that's gets a a All the guys get is a coffee can. <laughs> did I mention Sangria? <laughs> yes, you oh, did. yeah, I think I did. Yes, you uh, no, it's this. such a fun night. It's you got to take. You, you got to put that on your list. And Buddy, it's right off the freeway. Hey, how do uh, who sponsors you? Um. Oh yeah. So I've got I've got a new sponsor this season on board. Ah. Uh, Empire Motorsport. Um. Give them a shout out. But yeah. I've got. Uh, Pink Cheek Standing Salon, uh, Amsoil, Davis Trenching, Creative Tires, uh, United Window Tint and Wraps. Uh, everybody that supports me uh, definitely helps me out. So, Excellent. Well, you got my email. Send me uh, an email, and I'll be mm-hmm. happy to uh, get you and your team. Invite all your sponsors, whether they show up or not. Let's get on TV and have some fun. Yeah, that'll be awesome. All right, Definitely. buddy. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Be safe, and uh, we'll talk to you down the road. Of course. Thank you. Appreciate Take it. Take care. Thank you, guys. All right.
All right. Hey, folks, we're going to take a quick break, and then we got the wild ones back. The living legends. The living le- in studio. I'm going to say all three of them are living legends because they all have to live with each other. And that's, all right. Will that, will that work? Anything will FM work. FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. Welcome back to Racer Radio, FM 961-1170. The answer. Certified car clinic, 1170 North Woodside Avenue. Whatever you got to be done to your cars, whether it's a street car, sand car, dirt car, drag car, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, the gang over there have an in-house dyno. Anything they touch, they can make it go fast. Certified car clinic. Go to certifiedcarcare.net. Okay, the rest is yours, Dad. Oh, Sunshine. well, so we, yeah, we talked about Mercedes and just breaking records, smashing records, making yeah. a name for yeah. yourself, Kawasaki. Then Honda. Kawasaki for, I'm doing, um, oh, you're doing it. An order, in chronological oh, order. A montage. Then the family came, but you kept in the industry. Now we're over at Honda. Yes. And we're, what, coaching, mentoring, and Derek was getting really fired up on this topic as well. So <laughs> let's let's carry on our off-air conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, once once I quit racing and, and started a family, um, I started doing some coaching, some motocross coaching with Ricky Johnson, mm-hmm. a good friend of mine. And uh, after that, I became a certified instructor for the MSF uh, dirt bike school, and um Lowell uh, Christensen at American Honda that worked at the center said, I I need you to be my head coach here. And eventually I started running the program and now we do dirt bike training for anybody six years and older. And uh, we do side by side training. So the, you know, UTVs and the, the sports uh utvs um is this training for like safety or racing it's safety okay. so it's very low how speed. many people buy these side by yeah. sides and do not you think they would have learned their lesson with a three-wheeler yeah because <laughs> yeah. nothing will bite you quicker than a three-wheeler right well, that, that's why america american, american honda, honda built that center was specifically for three wheel well, because training. the lawsuits mm. were just mm-hmm. coming yeah. out of their ears yeah so, and, you know, we, we wow. teach the importance of wearing the proper apparel, right. you know, whether it's for dirt bike, ATV, or side-by-side, side. you know, where to, uh, how to use the controls, where to put your, for the side-by-sides, where to put your hands, how to mm-hmm. use them. Probably um, choosing the right vehicle as well. Yeah. Yeah. And going all the way down to you never go to the desert alone. Yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. You never go alone. You always exactly. go with somebody. So yeah. is it Jeez. filled up? Are the classes full or... Well, it's funny waves? for, so for dirt bike training, we stay really busy. I schedule the classes. I have about seven coaches. I don't do too much coaching myself anymore because I'm pretty much administrating mm-hmm. the program. Um, Are you okay with that or do you get Yeah, I miss it every once in a while. <laughs> you I can actually, always, you can yeah. always throw your yeah. leg over a bike and go Are out. You, That's well, not a problem. It's great. This, this ties into you guys. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, Ash, Ashley Ford, you know, John Oh, oh, Ashley Force. Yeah, Force. Force uh-huh. And Brittany came out. Oh. So Ashley brought her husband, because she's the older one, right? Right. Uh, she brought her husband and her two kids, and Brittany came out as well. Oh. And they all did a the dirt bike school together. Oh, really? really? And had a great time. Where and they was were Courtney. And they were awesome. They oh, were great. They I picked it up right away. No well. problem. So I got to teach that. So That's cool. That, that You're like, cool. Uh, yeah. you'll get a vacation this week. I'll take right. over. Right. So it's, that it's is pretty so cool. cool. That's and I super taught cool. Brock Glover's family. Oh. Yeah, Brock. Um you know, there's been a lot of... Uh, that is so cool. Well, see, now that's a TV segment or a KOSI <laughs> segment only because nobody, you know, everybody needs to know about this. And yeah, with, with I don't co- think people know. Now, COVID hit, when COVID hit mm-hmm. as hard as it hit, Yeah. everybody and their brother went out and bought a motorcycle. Oh, yes. I know. But they, they didn't were, know what to do with them but, once they bought them. 
Yeah. They just went out until they fell and hurt themselves. Oh, so when they buy, you say, hey, you should, you can take you know, these classes. The they're, dealers don't it's work not required. hard enough yeah, they on don't, this. They don't suggest it enough, but there's right. some dealers that are pretty proactive. The ones and, that usually have raced. Yeah. I and mean, they well, understand the dangers. It's such a great t- tool because, you know, we have 60, I mean, 50 cc all the way to a 230. So when a family goes into a dealership and they have, you know, wife, kids that are growing young, they don't know what to buy. So a dealer might say, go take the dirt bike school. Honda yeah. Rider Education has all the sizes. They'll put your kid on the appropriate one and then make a recommendation. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, may I ask what those classes run? Price? Yeah, wise? they're so reasonable. Um, 250 for the day. Wow. And that day. includes instruction, all the gear, and the, the bikes. The use of the bikes. Yeah, use of the bikes. Yeah, I mean, make sure the kid wants to do it before exactly. you buy all the gear yeah. and the motorcycle. Or mom. <laughs> or yes. sis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or dad. Yeah. Or dad. And it, clear, and it yeah. clears up a lot of misgivings. Well, the dads are funny because they're like, oh, I know how to ride. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, oh, what's the last <laughs> time you rode? Well, I rode when uh, I was a kid. And then they come out and they're like, wow. I learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah. My dad used to teach the classes on street, and I Mm -hmm. think he really enjoyed the women just because they asked the questions. Yes. They would ask and practice and then re-ask and clarify. And yeah. Yeah. Now, you had a point you wanted to make as we were just coming on air. Do you remember what that was, Derek? I'm drawing a blank because I'm I'm so (laughs) intrigued by this conversation. I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, it's such an important, because we all got to give back, especially when you've had as much given to you in the sport. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's your job to give back because if, if, if your dream was that nobody ever gets hurt on a motorcycle, Mm -hmm. that would be your dream. Yeah. Yeah, Well, and also to introduce them to the great sport of riding. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's such an empowering thing for young women, without a doubt. To be on a motorized vehicle and be able to operate it and be And having safe. the control. Yeah. Then you're going to get in a car and a car is no problem. My favorite bike is a Honda 305 Scrambler. Yeah. End discussion. I could She's do, laughing. She I could do, that made her I giggle. Could do, That's an older bike. I could do things with that. <laughs> Nobody thought it could be done. Oh. And then I can tell you about breaking four ribs and puncturing oh, a yeah. lung. Not long ago. Yeah, not long ago. And that well, was... Be, between... My husband and I, Derek and I, we've broken enough bones no. for to build somebody. So both the kids were like, "Uh, yeah, I don't think we're gonna." Race. So Derek, do you? We oh, haven't really? talked. We haven't talked. We're gonna have to bring you back since we haven't talked to you that much. Do you still ride? I I do. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to talk about yourself, right? I mean, you could ask me whatever questions you want. Yeah. We'll try yeah. to drag. Yeah. So are you in a senior class? Would that uh, would you be considered in a senior? Because I know you're not riding pro. with the kids. Yeah, I like to call it a. We like it's vet. vet. I'm not vet sure. Pro. I don't. I don't like any of those names. Like they used to. I like vet. I'm. We cool used to with go up to this vet. race. It, Mam- Mammoth and Motocross has an annual race that we would race. And now, as we get older, like they have, they called it the vet class and then the senior class. No, like you said, I as don't every ten years they have a new name for it. But <laughs> nobody wants this old. These old. I said if you if you change the name of the class, then I'll come race. Oh, you. T- so <laughs> at least. So they changed it to 30 plus and 40 plus, and it sounds uh, better than, I don't want to race the senior class. Who's no. our Who's our guy that runs? Lars Larson. Lars Larson. He's only 81 you heard that guy? Yep. 81, he still runs. Yep. I don't know what they would call that class. <laughs> the relic it, What class. I have noticed. Oh, I'll sign up for, for that. <laughs> what I have noticed, well, when I was younger, in the vet class was the oldest thing. They had that and then the old timers. No. And, but if you were over 30, you were vet, a veteran. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to say. It's yeah. just we're not talking up. 60, 70, yeah, 80 year olds. But bumping. now some of the top racers in the sport are over 30, the ones that are winning championships right now. Yes. So times have changed. Well, and, so and, would, that, and how? what would you attribute that to? Technology technology of the motorcycle? Everything. The motorcycle, the training. training yeah. I think all sports are seeing this type yeah. of development. Yeah. But um, Other than football. Yeah. But, I, I Yeah. And I, I think what you guys are talking to, though, I can't get out of my mind, though, that the safety and everything going into it, like we had all these people through COVID, like buying record numbers of oh my products. God. And you talked about the side-by-sides and training. Oh. And in addition to what Mercedes was talking about, they have USMCA, which she's also mm-hmm. certified out right. to, to teach people that have already learned how and right. need, need to take it to the next level. Yeah. And there's so many great things. We are talking about the, the military training. Right. Which um, we have... 
Um, I work at Kawasaki, and we've had some of our ambassadors go to the the military bases like Pendleton here and and give them uh, talks about hands on training. Yeah, because yeah. we as you know taxpayers and everything else, we've invested a lot in these training these these men and women to go out there and yeah. they, the last thing we want to do is go in their cars and their motorcycles and hurt, well you know, you know you know what gi stands for oh boy government <laughs> issue oh. so if you go out and break some government issue you could get in serious trouble and they manned mandate training like nobody's business well it's super meeting you guys i know you talk flesh. way too much we'll have to get you <laughs> on next down time. there we call danielle the church mouse she's the church mouse she's a great the observer which is good for a nurse i was in pre- she's a nurse right around the corner boy now that's smart mm-hmm. these two ride motorcycles I know. keep falling off wow. you keep, you keep well, patching them and putting them connection. together we're not used to talking <laughs> yeah i can tell you are this one is good send me an email let's okay. get you guys on tv can't thank you're more than welcome i know it's a well, long thank drive you for having us oh, oh no no our pleasure. Our pleasure right here on racial radio fm 961 am 1170 the answer